this is quite glorious but yeah like the the the, the washington post has been has independent media in its in its in its crosshairs um at the moment and yeah. the main reason uh, we can see is because it is collapsing so vanity fair has this very interesting um kind of insider peek at what's been going on at the washington post where um sally busby who was um who was the executive editor of the newspaper got fired without warning um and the washington post publisher will lewis um effectively stated um he, he effectively stated that yeah that um we are losing large amounts of money our audience has halved in recent years people are not reading your stuff i can't sugarcoat it anymore so i've had to take decisive urgent action to set us on a different path sourcing talent that i have worked with that are the best of the best um and this is quite clear that the washington post is effectively the victim of of dei which is to say what does it stand for alex oh diversity equity inclusion yeah yeah okay. Yeah, and it's so <laughs> so like like I missed that relay. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But there's yeah, there's a, like a lot of a lot of complaints about the fact that um, internally in the Washington Post that um, we now have four white men running three newsrooms, um, and they they want they want more diversity at yeah. the top again. Um, well, Jeff Bezos will get a spray tan. There you go. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed the um, the iguana eater himself. But yes, that it's. Um, it's i think it's just a wider testament to the total collapse of legacy media like I yeah mean, it's you you see like in the viewing figures for like cnn are just like completely in the toilet like people aren't listening anymore so in that context what can you do well lash out at independent journalists right yeah well you know and I, it's funny because uh maybe a month or two ago i was speaking to a mutual friend of ours uh Nabosha Malich. yes um and I, I, I commented to him that, you know, uh, New York Times and Wall Street Journal are kind of doing what they've always done. They're going along just fine. Um, that you can find nuggets of truth in the 24th paragraph of their reporting. And I said to him, this is two months ago, when was the last time the Washington Post made waves? Well, it was a couple of weeks ago with the hit piece on the gray zone. Um, but... Uh, you don't you really don't see them anymore and it's pretty clear now that they don't have this like um fake Mueller investigation to hype up that yeah. they really have no reason to exist anymore um yeah. because it's they were very like... much at the forefront of, of russia game and now that that's kind of a dead horse mm. uh they they they're really struggling to find their footing i think it's the same like the intercept like, literally admitted this like they they're in one of their daily fundraising emails they stated well now that people have stopped reading us now trump isn't in office yeah because right. they were all in on that and right. they have like betsy betsy reed who's like i don't even know what her job title is but she's editor-in-chief she, yeah yeah she was like all in on all in on on russiagate and then when the Mueller report dropped and it was like a total damn squib she was like well actually it proved lots of fast and loose collusion yeah but no like, just yeah it, it the and I think it's yeah, it's important to know as well that the intercept shedding staff, Ken Klippenstein, yeah. Ken Klippenstein, like like very publicly quit yeah. um, and is now very happy on Substack. Um, okay. There have been other um, uh, journalists uh, who have resigned uh, because of the fact that they uh, their agenda is effectively set by a number of people who it, internally who have no journalism experience, yeah. and a lot of it is not going near stories that would embarrass Pierre Amidia. Right, your old friend and, yeah like <laughs> inspiration but like yeah the, the 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 it's it's really interesting that th these people are openly stating this because it is the standard in the industry well they, i mean so the intercept like they launched with the snowden leaks 90 percent of which remains unpublished yes um they've closed the snowden archives now mm. they've, they've um, deleted them i think i i'm not potentially yeah um they've lost glenn greenwald Mm. Um, all the other reporters that I thought uh, did did good work for them um, occasionally. Uh, you, I mean, you had people like again Ken Klippenstein. You had people like Lee Fong. He's gone. Yeah. Um, who do they have left? They have Jeremy Scahill getting paid uh, forty three thousand dollars for for an article per article per article. Um, and he he does the podcast now. Um, who who listens to that podcast? I've never. Mm. Um, not that. 
you know we're so big but you know yeah 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 but it's just i mean you would, we're doing you would, it without our vr funding so oh, yeah but 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 like i mean if you're listening pierre like our rates are good yeah okay. like, i mean if you fancy getting in touch at some point um you know via i the promise i won't make any more infographics about you yeah indeed <laughs> indeed like the um the well old... my favorite was you know the 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 um he he had an avatar on a video game called second life which is literally what it's called in Second Life. And you just do normal things, but his uh, avatar was a black man named Kido Mand Mandala. Um, and there's like pictures on the internet of uh, Kido Mandala, um, you know, giving uh, speeches at the United Nations surrounded by women in bikinis and, you know, also, um, you know, in bondage and sex dungeons. It's it's quite hilarious. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's interesting as well because he has like, he funnels a lot of money into um, projects around human trafficking. Yeah. And it's like, I wonder why. Well, no, and what's it, well, his wider agenda? You know, well, he started doing that after um, one of the um, Hawaiian farming companies that he was uh, a big investor in. Mm. I think it was called the Maui Pineapple Company. Mm. I'd have to go back and check my article, but they got they got exp exposed for human trafficking. Interesting. And they were not able to um, like the workers were like literally forbidden from from leaving. They had to like sneak out in the dead of night and like hop barbed wire fences and shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Maui the Maui Land and Pineapple Company or something. So after after that got busted. That's when he started this organization called Humanity United and, and started pouring in money into anti-trafficking causes. Yeah, um, but is, I mean, there there was like a the, the, one of his one of his foundations. I don't think it was Illuminate. It was I think it was just called the, the Media Foundation. Yeah, that like they they published. A, and I think you've reported on this a few years back. They published a report on their activities and how they were funding all of these rather dubious media outlets in Africa. Yeah, and they boast about how well the reporting is is so it is so effective at like mobilizing people to get angry at the government that the government often will m make moves which are conducive to our interests right. without us even needing to like shame them over yeah it. and then it's like he amidia owns the pretty much the entire tech sector in east africa yeah as a result and it's just like it's it's absolutely naked like what he's doing quite clearly the intercept was not effective yeah beyond giving him some kind of outsider credibility when he's like in up to his nuts in the cia and like usa right. and stuff no, exactly. and i, I and, and like the the, the i the, the, they i i ended up just unsubscribing because i was getting them daily but like the the, emails. the, the, the fundraising emails which are like bizarrely threatening and, and and like say like we will stop Stop emailing you if you give us money. Yeah, it's like a crap. It's like a bad yeah. busker. Yeah, saying like I will stop playing if right. you, <laughs> you know, like if, if, yeah. if I get a payoff. And like like yeah, the, 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 they they're they, doing Chat GPT. That's the email I got the other day, and they they want money to sue Chat GPT. because Chat GPT is a, a better source of journalism yeah. than they are. And it's just how dare you? But it's like, but it's also as well. It's like the 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 they've. They always they, they they have repeatedly like some of the last emails I got from them were stating like oh well we've got all of this hacked Russian data and we're doing this huge project yeah and so we need thousands of dollars for this and then the end result is like one article about how China and Rus Russian state media have syndication agreements right. Written, yeah, written by the weirdo Alexei Kovalev, who was oh, orig Ryan, yeah. originally part of Medusa, um, yeah. left under rather uncertain circumstances, and is now targeting "quote unquote" Vatniks, um, claim suggesting that they will have that, that their testicles will be electrocuted by Russia and all this weird sexual fantasy stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's very very bizarre. But again, that they they are flailing as they. Go out. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.